Hello, my name is uh, Paul Leon. I'm a facial plastic surgeon uh, here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I wanted to take a little bit of a deep dive today uh, about a single cosmetic rhinoplasty patient. Rhinoplasty is a big deal in my practice. Like most facial plastic surgeons, we don't have a huge laundry list of uh, surgical procedures that we do. Uh, we're quite specialized. There's about half a dozen procedures that I do, things like rhinoplasties, facelift, eyelid work, uh, that constitute the vast majority of my practice. And we think, it's our bias on the world, I guess, we think that that level of specialization is, is in the interests of the patient. So let's take a look at this one uh, rhinoplasty result. This very nice lady came in, uh, terrific lady. Uh, she had some very specific concerns about her nose. Her number one concern was uh, the sort of bulbous nature of her tip. Tip rhinoplasty, the portion of the rhinoplasty focus on the tip, is a very elegant, very nuanced procedure. There's an old saying about rhinoplasty that once you, once you master the tip, uh, you've mastered rhinoplasty. So one concern, the, the bulbous nature of the tip. She also had some concern that she had a little bit of height in her nasal dorsum, which is a very uh, common uh, complaint uh, with rhinoplasty patients. There was also some nuanced things. In addition to her tip being bulbous, it was a little bit what we call under-rotated, which means the tip was drooping down a bit. And also the angle between what we call the philtrum, this part of the upper lip, and the columella was a little bit rounded. And typically, you want a nice crisp angle between the philtrum and the columella. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to go through three classic views on rhinoplasty. We're first going to look at the frontal view, then we're going to look at the profile view like this, and then we're going to look at the oblique view, the three-quarters view, and I'm going to explain what we did and why we did it from each of these views. First, we're going to take a look at the frontal view, the before and after pictures from the frontal view. Now, you'll remember from what I just said, one of her main complaints was the bulbous nature of her nasal tip. And so if you compare on the before and after pictures, you can see whereas the tip was initially kind of a rounded, kind of bulbous, inelegant shape. You can see in the after picture, she now has the tip that most rhinoplasty patients want. It's not pointy or anything like that. It looks completely natural, but it's an elegant, refined tip. Another concept that when rhinoplasty surgeons look at the frontal before and after views is something called the brow tip aesthetic line. And so you'll see some lines being drawn on the brow tip aesthetic line. It's sort of a gently curved line from the middle part of the brow down here to the tip of the nose. You'll see in the before picture on the left-hand side, that's from the surgeon's view, you're looking at the screen, it might look like your right-hand side. But from one of these two sides, the brow tip aesthetic line is a little bit broken. It's a little bit wavy. Whereas you see in the after picture, there's nice smooth brow tip aesthetic lines, which again is an elegant, attractive looking nose. The final point, a bit of a nuance, we didn't just make the nose, the tip of the nose that is, uh, more elegant. We also, and you'll see this more in the lateral, lateral view, we rotated the tip up just a little bit. Obviously, for a man or a woman, you're not wanting to look up the nostrils, but there's a certain rotation of the tip that appears youthful, appears elegant, appears healthy, and we achieve that for her as well if you take a close look. Now we're looking at the lateral before and after view on this very nice patient, and you'll see there's a couple of things we achieved. Firstly, whereas this uh, nice patient didn't have a very high dorsum, didn't have really a hump on her dorsum, there was a little bit of extra height there that, uh, that she didn't want. And so you can see while maintaining a very natural appearance, which is a key characteristic of every rhinoplasty we do. We don't want our patients to look done or operated on. And we did that back in the 70s, not me, but you know, back in a previous era, they would sort of scoop out the dorsum too much. We never do this. It's also very important uh, to help with making sure the patient breathes well to not scoop it out too much, which is super important. It's not just to look pretty, it has to breathe well. It's, it's part of the physiology of, of breathing. And so you can see, we gently reduce the height of the dorsum to again, a more elegant shape. That's the first thing you might see on the lateral view. Two other subtleties. Remember I mentioned to you uh, a minute ago that we rotated the tip of the nose. So rotate at the angle between the philtrum and the columella a little bit up like that. You can see it's relatively subtle, but we did do that on the lateral view, which improves the cosmetic appearance. And then another subtlety, that angle between what we call, again, the philtrum here and the columella, 
Typically what you want in a, in a nose is for that to be a nice crisp angle between the columella and the philtrum. And you can see in the before picture, it's a little bit rounded. Whereas in the after picture, it's that nice crisp angle. That's a wonderful characteristic of a beautiful, elegant nose. So the last view we want to look at is the so-called oblique view, or some people call it the three quarters view. This is where you can sort of bring all the parts of the rhinoplasty, all of the little improvements that we made together. If you look at these two oblique views, you'll see that you can get a peek at the great improvement in the elegance and definition of her nasal tip. You can also detect that the tip has been rotated up a little bit, just as much as required. We've also gone ahead and, and diminished the height of the dorsum. All of these make for a more elegant, beautiful nose. Sometimes when you analyze rhinoplasty, we do this all the time when I'm presenting at meetings or listening to other colleagues present at meetings. Uh, you know, we, we go into individual parts like, okay, what did you do to the dorsum? What did you do to the tip? That's a useful way to look at rhinoplasty. But what I'd encourage you as you're out looking at the internet at all these before and after pictures, you can look at those individual details, but sometimes it helps to step back, you know, a, a few feet and just look at, the, look at the nose overall. And if you look at that with these two oblique views that we're showing you now. Ask yourself the question, which nose is more elegant? Which nose sits more harmoniously in the context of the rest of the face? Rhinoplasty surgeons always uh, tend to say, as much effort as we put into rhinoplasty, we want somebody looking at somebody uh, who's had a rhinoplasty to be drawn to the beauty of their eyes or their eyebrows, this. The nose shouldn't be a distraction on the face. And I think what we've achieved with this patient very nicely is the, is the after picture of the nose is elegant and it's in no way a distraction from the natural beauty of this wonderful patient's face. So anyway, I hope that information was helpful in reviewing this, uh, this rhinoplasty case. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. We'd be most happy to, to help you out. Thank you so much.